Hello, Matthew Taming here. Welcome to another video tutorial for Balboa Gallery Extension. In this lesson, I want to show you how to configure your settings for the gallery. But in order to do so, you first have to create one. So what you do is you go to Extensions, I'm sorry, Components, and then you click to click on the gallery. And then from here, your page should look something like this. And what you want to do is you want to click on this little camera icon here. It's going to ask you for a gallery name. So you name your gallery and click on save so now that gallery has been created and it's just showing you just like a, a brief tour here you can click on next to kind of show you where things are or you can just click on the X and it's just going to X that off so once you've done that even before you start to create your gallery I want to walk you through the settings so you click on settings and in your settings here you have several tabs that I want you to you know kind of go through with, with you so the first one is the general this general one is is pretty much the basis of how the layout and everything is going to be and you can kind of just scroll through here to see what it's about for example you have to lazy load and you have to page refresh you have to scroll now by default most of these settings here will work just fine with your um with your site but if you wanted to change some things this is where you come to make those changes so if you want to regenerate your thumbnail here then you can click to regenerate there sometimes when you upload some thumbnails and it's not showing properly or having some as a little disturbed for whatever reason you click here to regenerate it and it's going to generate and fix that for you and then you have the other album mode you have here the random sorting you have here the page refresh you can refresh the page you can disable auto scroll so people will be able to automatically scroll um, they would have to manually just do it and you have the class suffix here and the class suffix is if you have some type of code that you want to style something differently generally utilize the suffix um, tags or so um, modules have them and different parts of Joomla has them so if you have some stuff that you want to style differently you can do that and you want to make sure that the load jQuery is set to you know check with this box here and then you go over to the thumbnail now in the, in the thumbnail part you have to generate you have to capture you have the topography so this is where you change your layout when you click on the drop down when you look at the demo from the other video that I did, you're going to notice that you have several different options here. You have Justify, Masonry, Mentor, Grid, Title, and Square. So based on how you want the layout to be presented on the front end, this is where you come in to change that. So sometimes you may want something as Masonry, you want something as Title, that's pretty much up to you. But all of this is going to make a lot more sense when you actually see how it looks on the front end when we start to make those changes and then here you can specify the image width and height and you can the image quality now the image quality too is another key thing you notate if you have an image that you want the best quality for it if you put this all the way to 100 it's going to give the best quality but that's also going to affect the load time so one thing you'll be conscious of too is you want to have a balance between quality and the load time so if you have something that you want it to load faster the quality you can put the quality down to about 40 or 30 or 50 and you just kind of see how that looks but at the same time you want to be careful too to make sure that it's not loading you know too long it's not taking forever to load because if you have an image or a bunch of images that's taking forever to load then people get frustrated they get confused that you know they just don't want to watch it anymore and then you can do the same thing here for, for the number of columns so you can choose the columns for uh, the tablet the, the, uh, the landscape the portrait and the quality you can set the pixel spacing as well so the space in this the, the space between the images so if you want a lot more space you add more space if you want less space uh, then you can be able to do that here and then you go over here to the caption if you want to disable caption in your images then you can click to disable it's not going to have any captions on there and you can choose the caption effect so you have several effects and we're going to take a look how this effects work on the front end but you have up to uh, 11 different effects here that you can be able to use um, 13 different effects you can be able to use so based on the effect that you want sometimes maybe you want it to slide in or you know expand or fade or so all these effects here are going to play a role in how it's presented in the front end and then you can choose the caption uh, background color so if you want to caption then you can choose the background if you don't want to show the title for your, your images then you can click here to disable it's not going to show it or if you don't want to show the, the category you can do the same thing here sometimes you don't want to show a particular category but if you have a, a site where you, it's a lot of images 
and you want to categorize it, then this is a great way for you to just lift that on there. And then the topography is pretty much the styling for how you want things to look in terms of the, you know, the text and the fonts. So you can choose the other title, the category, or a short description, and you can choose the font color. So if you're if you want to put a color that matches your website, for example, you click here and you can drag this around to put it wherever you want it to be. And then the font weight, do you want a normal or do you want a bold? And then the font size, you have the flexibility here, you know, to make it bigger or as small as you want it to be. And then, of course, you have the alignment. You want it to be center, left, or right. So all this plays a role in terms of how your thumbnail is being displayed. And then you have the light box. The light box is when things pop up. So if you want to enable the light box when someone clicks on an image, it's going to pop it up so they can click on the next one. And you have the alias. So the alias is really good for SEO reasons because Joomla utilizes that. So you want to make sure that you put your alias, you want to lift that on there. And then you want to auto resize and then the light box, the body color, and you can choose the position of the image here or description. You want it to be on the right, on the left. So this gives you a lot of flexibility uh, when you're customizing this because you can put in different parts of your, your site based on the layout of the site. And you have the light box, the background here. You can change the color to whatever color you want it to be. And then you have the header. Do you want to display the header, the title, the zoom? So you can also share this to share settings with Twitter and social media. So it's a great way for you to allow people to share stuff on on their favorite social media website. So if someone has Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or whatever, they can share that here. And do you want to display download? So if you have some images that you want people to be able to download it, then you check this box here and they're going to be able to just, you know, download it. And if you want them to display the likes, you can check this like box here and people can be able to send them the likes that particular uh, gallery or photo has. And then your navigation, you can change the navigation, you know, the arrows, you can change the color, you can change the background. And then for comments, now comments here, you have several options. You can, you can use discuss, you can use this contact. So discuss is probably, one of the, you know, the, the popular ones that you use. And I'll use it too on my sites and other websites. But you have to create an account to go to discuss.com, I believe, and you create an account. It's free, and they're going to give you a code. So when you choose discuss here, they're going to give you a your name, a subdomain name. So you put that information on here, and any time that a comment is posted, it's going to show up on, on the site. And from discuss, you can be able to customize. You can be able to make that private. You can be able to, you know, uh, work in the settings from their end. But you have that option. The same thing, too, with the um, contact. You put your ID and you can be able to you know configure from the end and then you have you have the compression do you want things to be compressed right now about default set to no but there's something too that you can be able to put later and you have the filter so with the filter do you want it to filter for example you know different names so let's say you have a, a bunch of photos and you have one for school one for marketing one for this one for that do you want to enable that fil filter so it can kind of sort things out for you so you can choose here the left, the right, or the center. And you choose the backgrounds and the border, uh, the, the weight and stuff like that here. And you have tags. This is where your tags, uh, you can enable the tags. And once you do that, you're going to be able to create different tags that are associated with each particular item. And we're going to take a look at that later on. And there's the background for the tags. You can change the topography if you want to enable this or set it to no. And you go to the colors. You can enable the colors. You can change the border radius. And let's go over to pagination. Pagination has a lot to do with how the page is style, how it looks. So if you want to enable pagination, of course. And you have your default. You have the dots, infinite, the load more, and the slider. So all these are different ways that the gallery is going to be showing on the front end. And you have the images per page. So you want to have 16, 20. You can have up to 100 images per page. But once again, you want to make sure that if you're going to have that many uh, that you choose the right position, the pagination type here. So if you're going to have a lot of images on the page, then you want to make sure you set to uh, the load more. So when this scroll down and it shows, let's say, 15 images to click load more, they're going to see more. And you have the background options here. You have the border, you have the topography and you go over to the copyright. So this a copyright is really great because if you don't want people to right click to save the image, let's say you have some really great images that you don't want people to save it. Well, you just click on here and it's going to disable the function on the mouse when someone right clicks it to save it. And you can also disable shortcut shortcuts and disable the developer con 
console. And another great thing here too that I have is the watermark. And you want to watermark your images so when people download, it's going to have your logo. It's going to have something that says you're the owner of this. You can choose here, and you can choose from where you want to get that uh, watermark from, and you choose the position where you want that watermark to be, and it's going to show on there. Now, watermarks are really great because if you don't want people to steal your images, you can put that on there. You can also auto scale it, so it's going to automatically just scale. Or you can choose the watermark um the opacity, like how bright it is. So if you put a logo on there, you can drag this down. The lower the number, the less bright it's going to be. So you want to make sure that you blend it in so it blends in with the photo, but at the same time gives you um, enough visibility so people know that's yours. So that's how you work in the configuration, the settings for this. And that's so important for you to go through to understand how it works even before you start creating your galleries because you know exactly where to go, what to do, and how to configure it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so anytime I release a new video like this one, you're going to be the first person to get access to it.